Hello, Simex. Okay, I have some responses to your video. Um, first of all, uh, I just want to say, you know, I'm, I believe in willpower. I don't believe in the free will. I think the concept of free um, has problems, you know, pro absolutist problems. But you're right, I do believe in, in will. And if I'm going to have to decide that we're all either mechanistic and more or less dead and don't actually have will, or that, uh, so that the things that seem like they do don't actually, or I have to decide that we all have some element of will and the things that don't seem too must, I will go with the latter. Okay. Um, now, this is not a kind of area where, like in my epistemology, I feel very certain about how things uh, need to be constructed at this point. You know, but I do have some opinions, and so my opinions would be, one, the virus is alive. It is alive. Uh, we can say it's simple, but to me that's a little bit, a little bit insane because no humans ever create anything as complex as a virus, and the fact is we can't actually explain um, what's going on, why, you know, genes get spliced and one part of the gene is chosen to be reproduced and another isn't, so even inside the cell we see these things going on that are not fully explained mechanistically people that say that they are are just hoping that they are they're just saying well it's close enough we'll probably explain it mechanistically well I don't think so I think when you look closely enough you get really weird kinds of physics that you also can't explain um, mechanistically and with um, a one-to-one -one kind of uh, one set of causes leads to one set of results sort of um, picture so I think that um, that the viruses are alive now I'm I'm relativistic I'm a skeptic. I call my philosophy relativistic skepticism. So when I say I accept the distinction of living and non-living things, you know, I don't actually think that's going to be an absolute distinction. I think all distinctions in the end are arbitrary and uh, blurry. Um, I mean, look at the distinction between a wave and a particle. That's a very fundamental looking distinction. And you could even say it's a fundamental distinction. And in ideas, it's a fundamental ex uh, distinction. Uh, it's a very valid distinction. But then you look at nature and there's things that have qualities of both. So obviously they're not as distinct in reality as they seem to be. So um, I do believe that there is a, a, a very good distinction about uh, between living things and things that react just mechanistically, unliving things. Um, but I don't think that it's fundamental. And it's uh, interesting to look at the point where it breaks down and we transition from one to the other. I think that it's a wrong approach to look for that breakdown in simple life forms and to think that that breakdown occurs, but the, the breakdown that is between conscious, willing creatures that care about what's going on to them to mechanistic things. It's wrong to put that in the insect world or in the mammal world or even bacteria. It's wrong to look for that distinction in things that are actually living. The idea of caring about what's going on to you and making some decisions uh, while negotiating the various urges that you have genetically, I mean, those are properties of, of all life. Uh, so, frankly, I mean, I'm in the position of looking at an atom and saying, well, what sort of properties of an atom are... Um, similar enough or that they to will that they may be components of will I mean if if I'm right then the idea of will breaks down into these material material bits that we're of which we are made and um, you know I, I don't think it's will exactly for there's a threshold there where the expression of this you know becomes possible and so when you look for the components on the other side of that threshold they're not really going to be just like will and consciousness, um, but they, you know, but they can still be these components, and that's why you know quantum mechanics is an interesting thing because there was a point when we thought all the mechanistic things behaved in in totally certain ways, and that anything that happens with mechanistic elements should be determinable, um, and we have determinism, and then you by induction you assume that there is going to be determinism for uh, for these complex things. And if you look closely enough in quantum mechanics, you find, oh, well, they're not, it's not really a determinism there either. There's these money possibilities, and that open the, uh, up, opens up a window where the induction that we, complex beings, should follow deterministic laws uh, 
you know, does not seem valid anymore. Um, it's possible, but it's certainly we have ideas in physics now that could explain why, the, how, why there's room in the universe for this phenomena of life and willing and caring about what happens to you. Um, so, uh, so that's my response. Um, as on the stuff about it, it both being true, well, yeah, we're going to have a unifying principle in the end. We're going to be able to explain why we're made of matter, and at some level it's mechanistic, and at some level it's conscious um, or willful, and you know it'll come down to the same set of reasons because we are made of this this stuff. It's just that you know to me it seems that part of that solution will have to be that these purely mechanistic things are themselves not purely mechanistic. There's some way, some part of them that's m willful in the sense that if they're combined with enough other right types of matter that that will becomes possible to express. Um, and the distinction between life and non-life, I mean, is still going to be valid because there is this element of, of caring about your survival, you know, having an input of some sort of nutrients that keeps the system going, being an entropy pump, and just sort of defying some of the purely mechanistic uh, uh, ways of, of thinking about things. Cheers.